Hello everyone, this is Umut Alpton. My friends Barfin Mısırlı, Ekin Görgün and I made a presentation about topic-based work. In this presentation, we are going to talk about what is topic-based work and why do topic-based work. And after that, we are going to talk about how to proceed and underneath that, choosing a topic, planning time, collecting materials, functions and situations, methods and activities and assessments will be mentioned. And we'll move on to suggested topics and examples. And finally, we're going to summarize all of the things we mentioned and finish the presentation. So let's begin with what is topic-based work. Topic-based work means putting an emphasis on a subject, topic or a theme in a lesson and contents of the books being arranged around these topics. It is essentially a form of content-based instruction. Before going on with the reasons of the useful nature of topic-based work, let's remember the qualities of young learners to give us an idea of what they need. Qualities of young learners are that they are imaginative and energetic. They need to be engaged in bodily activities. They enjoy imitating. They often learn through implicit teaching rather than direct instruction. And they are intrinsically curious. Other noticeable features of young learners are they wish to please their teacher rather than their peer groups, which encourage them to try to participate even if they don't understand the instructions. They enjoy exploring things, drawings, playing games, singing and solving puzzles. Their attention span is short, so kinesthetic activities and visual materials with bright colors need to be used to motivate them. While topic-based teaching is not the only way to organize your teaching, it is a useful and practical way to teach as well as a fun one. So why do topic-based work? Advantages of content-based instructions are simply Enhance motivation, enhance self-confidence, enhance L2 proficiency, and enhance cultural literacy. If we take it a little further and explain the reasons behind why doing topic-based work with young learners are beneficial, because it is easier to relate the lessons to the experiences and interests of the students. Students can associate words, functions, structures, and situations with a particular topic. Association helps memory, and learning language in context clearly helps both understanding and memory. It helps to bring out reactions and feelings which are not always covered in textbooks. It brings the learner needs more into focus. Working on topics allows a more personal, local touch materials which may not exist in your country. How you organize your material within a topic is very personal and is dependent on the particular class that you're teaching. It allows you to rearrange materials according to what is currently happening at the time of teaching, which allows you to work across the curriculum in a way that strictly textbook teaching does not allow. The time you spend on a theme or a topic can be as long as you like, depending on the interest it arouses or the materials you have access to. Since the emphasis is on content, the work in the classroom includes all language skills as well as guided and free activities. So let's move on to section 2, how to proceed. While choosing your topic and planning your lesson around it, remember that content-based instruction in its purest form should have these four characteristics. First, subject matter core. Second, use of authentic text. Third, learning of new information and appropriate to the specific needs of students. Usually, topic is decided by the teacher, but if students are interested in a certain subject and you believe they can do it in English, you can work it in your timetable. As we mentioned, the time you spend is easily adjusted when you deal with themes and topics rather than structures. If you're working in a primary school, you can check what your students are doing in other classes and choose topics to tie with what they are learning or already learned, such as if they are currently covering countries and the world in other classes, maybe you can too. Let's talk about planning time. Ideally, this needs to be done at the long-term planning stage which will be covered in coming weeks. In other cases, the topic work just comes out spontaneously. The students may show special interest to a certain text or etc. In these situations, you may want to spend one or two lessons on the particular topic and this will be decided almost on the spot. If you are new to topic-based teaching, it is best to start on a small scale. Having a trial lesson on a topic children are particularly interested in and might be based on the textbook will give some idea of the possibilities this kind of teaching presents. So now let's talk about collecting materials. 
Once you have some ideas on possible topics, you should start looking for materials which could be all sorts of written and spoken text, pictures, objects, cards, ideas or etc. When you find something, be sure to make a note of it and store it. If you can write on the back of the material, then do so. Otherwise, write it down on a piece of paper, label it and then put it into ring binder or cardboard box for that topic. We always think we'll remember our brilliant ideas, but we don't unless we make a note of them. Similarly, once you have finished with a topic, make sure that all the materials you used go back into the relevant files and boxes, even the materials which did not work well. You might find different uses for it later on. The teacher will do most of the collecting and all the filing, but the pupils can often help to find pictures and objects in connection with a particular topic. As we can remember from previous classes, children have short attention spans, so kinesthetic activities and visuals with bright colors need to be used to help them and guide their attention, so be sure to choose and design your materials accordingly. Now let's move on to functions and situations. Once you have your topic and corresponding materials, work out which situations and functions of the language. Let's say pets is your topic. The situations in which you can use the topic could be playing with a pet, uh, visiting a pet shop, favorite pets, asking parents for a pet, zoos, feeding your pets, or etc. Useful functions of the language you can cover can be describing, expressing likes and dislikes, or asking for something. Let's give an example from the curriculum. The fifth unit of the second grade curriculum is colors. The situations in which you deal with colors could be painting pictures, coloring inside of the lines of a picture, picking furniture colors to decorate. The functions of language are stated as expressing likes and dislikes, making simple inquiries, expressing quantity or etc. Now we're moving on methods and activities. Make use of what is already familiar to the students as well as activities in the textbook. However, you may find that stepping outside the textbook can lead to much more creative thinking on the part of both the teacher and the students. Topic-based work opens up all sorts of possibilities. The temptation in doing topic-based teaching is to let the free activities take over, but remember that the input and the guided activities have to be there too, just as simple activities have to be there alongside the more challenging ones. According to the qualities of young learners, activities around the topics should address visual, auditory and the kinesthetic learner styles to provide rich and accessible input for the children from a variety of sources. Activities in a content-based instruction classroom are basically of two kinds, experiential and expository approaches. Expository activities include lectures, reading of articles and other texts, students' presentation and classroom discussions. On the other hand, experiential activities include role plays, workshops, simulations, field trips, demonstrations and interaction with a native speaker. As topic-based work is included inside the definition of content-based instruction, you can frame your chosen methods and activities around these two approaches. While both can be done with young learners, it is up to the teacher to decide according to their students' proficiency levels and chosen topic. Since this is about young learners, an experiential approach could be better. An experiential approach can work the best if young learner qualities are taken into consideration. As children enjoy exploring things and playing games, role plays and field trips may come in handy. If leaving the classroom is not possible, demonstrations could do just as well. Now we're going to talk about assessment before we finish section 2. Since topic-based work is complete in itself, it gives you and the pupils a good opportunity to assess what you've been doing. Do this assessment in the mother tongue. Ask the children what they liked or didn't like doing. What they would have liked to spend more or less time on. Which stories did they like? Do they think another class would like the same topic? Ask them what they think they have learned and use the opportunity to repeat what's been gone through in class. Although small children find this type of assessment very difficult to begin with, it is well worth starting in a very casual way with the 5 to 7 year olds. Young learners take tremendous pride in being taken seriously, and we could perhaps spend a little more time finding out and taking into consideration our pupils' reaction and opinions. 
For example, we could decide with the pupils what to display for the rest of the school or for a parent's evening. Now we're here at section 3, suggested topics and examples. Let's now look at the type of materials which you could collect for two different topics. We've chosen to look at food. We've got this example from the course pack. Now remember that what you collect is entirely depend on where you are, the situation you're in, your pupils and your school as well as the level of the class. You can easily do either of these topics very successfully without using any of the material which we suggest here. We've considered food as a broad topic which might take about 12 lessons in all, but which should perhaps be done in two blocks of six lessons. Now here are materials. Lots of pictures collected by yourself and students. Menus, lists of prices, actual foods, but on the day itself, tins, packets of food or etc, cups or saucers or etc, recipes, listening text, stories about food and songs and rhymes. Now situations and functions. We want our pupils to be able to describe local food as well as some foreign foods they may be familiar with. We want them to be able to follow simple recipes and give instructions on how to make simple dishes. We want them to be able to behave politely at the table in English. We want them to be able to express their likes and dislikes. And we want them to be able to do simple shopping. Structures they should know by the end of the topic period is uh, I like, don't like, would you like something, no thank you, thanks, yes please, or etc. You can see on the screen. Having decided on what you want the pupils to learn, there are lots of ways of tackling the work itself. Here are just a few suggestions. Vocabulary work. Cards. Pictures pasted on cardboard or belt cards can be used to present the vocabulary, along with the actual food which you can bring in or ask pupils to bring in on the day. To practice vocabulary, you can use card games like Find Your Partner or Memory and make them to suit our topic. You can do listening comprehension work like this exercise where students have to place the right foot in front of the right person as they listen. They cut out the different foods before they start to listen. If your pupils have a meal at the school or bring packed lunch, make sure they can tell you all about them. And dialogues and role play. After vocab work, you can move on to dialogue work and role play. Start off with simple dialogues, which can either be presented orally or you can use comic strips like this one on the screen. Let students gradually move on to much freer work using cue cards. Alternatively, students can make up their own lists using their own pictures or make up the most fantastic meals they like. Now, free activities. You can bring a character you've created into the topic and set the pupils to working groups with one group making up what this character would have for its birthday tea, another working on the character's picnic, another on what it would serve if the head teacher came to the tea, and another on its favorite breakfast, etc. The completed work can be oral, a list, a dialogue, a play, and even a story. If you want to concentrate on shopping, then you can easily set up a shop in your English corner. Many teachers like to have a shop set up in the classroom all the time, since there are many uses for it in the first few years of language teaching. In between doing all this, you can have stories, songs and rhymes. Read them The Hungry Caterpillar or The Turnip Story, which you can find on page 28 of Teaching English to Children. Or any other story you can find which you think is interesting and which is connected with your topic. There is an enormous choice of songs and rhymes to do with food, like the following, hot cross buns, the muffin man, fish fish olna dish, pate cake, and finally one potato, two potato. Now recipes and making food. For this part of the work, you might have to choose recipes with no actual cooking involved like salads or sandwiches. You can start off by asking the students about what they can make, if anything. This will be entirely dependent on where you live, but young children do enjoy being able to help in the kitchen even if it's only cutting out the pastry. Find recipes which will be relatively familiar to the pupils. Ask them what they think you do first. What do I need to have? What do I do then? And after that or etc etc. Build up the recipe with them. Then show it to them on the board or the screen. 
assessment. This will follow the general lines given before, although in this case the children may think that the success of this topic work depends on whether or not they enjoy the activity. Now let's take a glimpse at our own national curriculum and one of its themes for the 4th grade students free time. Here are the materials as cur curriculum suggests. Posters, rhymes, songs, stories, tables, videos, cartoons and etc etc. And situations and functions. We want our students to be able to make simple inquiries. We want them to be able to talk about their likes and dislike and be engaged in simple conversations. We want them to be able to ask for clarifications in conversations. Structures they should know by the end of the topic period are I like, dislike, do you like, or you can see the rest of them on the screen. The curriculum suggests a number of activities, but we will be taking a few and give some simple examples. Drama and games, for example. Students can demonstrate and role play what they like doing in their free time and the others try to guess. If the students does not understand what someone has said because the class was being loud or they got excited, they can say, can you say that again? Which would allow them to practice form while staying inside the topic. This can be gamified by giving points to students and deciding on a simple reward for the winner. And arts and crafts. The teacher can prepare cards or you can make each student prepare one and these cards with the activities and objects can be placed on the board. Then you can ask students to pick a card and tell if they like the activity on the card or if they can play with the object or etc. Or you can gamify this too by stating a like or a dislike and the first person to pick the correct card can state if they like or dislike it too. To summarize, topic-based work can help you create an environment where children can express their creativity and allows you to achieve a range of results where structure-based instruction may fail to do so. In order to make the best of topic-based work, the teacher must plan their lesson accordingly while allowing some leeway for the lesson to go further than what the textbook might suggest. And thank you all for listening. I hope this was a great lecture for you all too. Try to stay safe and healthy. Goodbye. Thank you.